Hi everyone, I'm back from Paris. I had a great time. I mean, I was only there for four nights, uh, but I think I really got a lot covered. I mean, we did some of the main sites and then I also got some time for um, perfumery. Uh, my friend is a really flexible person, even though she's not like a real perfume addict. We spent some time together and then she kind of like later in our stay, I had a chance to like go back to Javoy and spend time there alone because she kind of needed to take a rest. And so it all worked out for the best, and I'm really happy that I didn't spend a fortune, but I did spend some money, and I, I bought things that, that I knew this time. So why don't I just start by telling you um, what, I, what I got. First of all, I got a cheapie that I've actually had my nose on, or my eyes on for a while, because I've, I've been through a decant of this stuff. It's called Heliotrope Blanc. Uh, Heliotrope Blanc, that's how you pronounce it. It's Blanc with a C at the end, but in French you don't hear the C. Uh, and it's by the house L.T. Piver. Uh, and this is also the name of the perfumer of this particular fragrance. This house has like 45 registered fragrances uh, on Fragrantica. It, it's considered to be one of the first French perfumeries. Um, and I paid... Uh, there's, a, there's a little shop on champs Elysees. That's like the main kind of luxury shopping street um, in Paris. Although I didn't find, I didn't get that real luxury feeling. Like we have a luxury street in Stockholm, which is like, it's kind of a walk street. Uh, a lot of the shops have, you know, bouncers and it's just like really calm when you come in. But this was just kind of crazy, like so many people. And this little shop kind of was kind of like a little cheap shop. They had some expensive fragrances as well, like some expensive, like um, I think Alexander J., I think is a house that was quite pricey that I saw there. They had a lot of, like a big range, um, and, but everything was just kind of pressed in there. Um, and they also sold like little soap dishes and these two really old women were working there that didn't speak any English. Uh, but I knew this fragrance right away and I, I've been looking at it and it's pretty cheap to to order it, but like the the, the postage was, was like as, almost as high as the fragrance itself. So I just kind of waited and it was just fun to buy it in store. So I think I paid, then they were 20, it was also 20% off, I think. So instead of uh, 50 euro, 49 euro, it was 39 euro, which was a pretty good price. And this is a, a heliotrope, almondy, very light fragrance. It's an EDT. Uh, I think the other notes are like ylang ylang. Let me see, I've got them here. Um, ylang ylang, vanilla, and jasmine. Uh, and it's not super almondy. It's kind of like very, very light. Let me just spray a little just to remember. It's kind of one of those straight out of the shower kind of fragrances. Um, it's just a really nice, easy wear and a hundred mil for that price. And I think the bottle is actually, you see, it's kind of like old fashioned. I mean, you can tell the cap is plastic. It, it's not like real high quality, but I think the bottle itself with this is just really, really cute. And I think this, this fragrance is like really old. It was created like long, long time ago. And I'm not sure this perfumer is even alive. Um, I just found that interesting. I, I, I didn't, they also, he, this perfumer, his name is LT, um, let me see his name, Louis Toussaint Piver. So this is, those are his initials. He's made one other fragrance and it's called Eau de Cologne de Prince, like the cologne for princes. Uh, it's, it's a citrus ar aromatic. And that one at least was, was created in 1850. So that gives you an idea about when he, you know, when he was active. So I, I just thought it was really fun to come home with this. And then I bought a uh, mini of Amber 114 from Histoire de Parfum. Uh, and I love that they have these little ones. And I could have gotten this at home. We, there's a Swedish shop that sells them kind of in southern Sweden. But I would have had to order it and maybe pay a little bit for postage. I'm not quite sure. But it, I, I probably paid the same amount. So I'll just say one thing. Paris was not cheap. Like the, the prices kind of held me back. Um, we went to uh, to Nose and to Javoy, and then some like flagship stores like Guerlain, and we went to um, Galerie Lafayette that had like so many niche brands, but prices were high. So that kind of was, and I and I was really good about this, and I Googled and I found out you know that some things um, my friend was interested in buying something from the Guerlain shop, and I said you know she could get this like uh, so much cheaper online, like from one of the discount stores. So I kind of I. 
she, I said she wasn't allowed to buy it at, at Guerlain. I know she wanted to get, I mean, they have the exclusives there and those are kind of hard to get and they're, you can't find them cheaper anywhere. Like she wanted to get Bois d'Armini, she really liked that. But there are so many other ambers and it's like the price was like 325 euros for 100 mil and they had nothing smaller to offer. So it's, it's just not, I had to kind of discourage her from getting it because I would have felt bad. But this Amber 114, um, I've had a decant before. It's something I, I think as a, as a YouTuber and a fragrance reviewer, I'll, I'll really, uh, I can use this as a reference for like all other Ambers because this is a fragrance that people know about. This one in Amber Sultan from uh, Serge Lutens. I was really looking forward to getting my nose on Serge Lutens at, uh, at the airport in Paris, but our particular flight was like off in one of the wings. There was like nothing, there was like small duty free. They had almost nothing to offer. It was really boring, just designers. Um, so I guess I saved some money there. I might've picked up a bottle of something, I don't know. But this is just a really good, nice, kind of smoky resinous amber. I wore it yesterday. It, it's beautiful. I'm gonna compare it with, you know, some of my other ones and I'll tell you a little bit about, you know, where it fits into the kind of range of ambers that I own. Then I bought this one I've talked about so much on my channel. I love this fragrance so much. Um, and it's Cacao Porcelana from Atelier Matiri, which is a small Italian house that has, they only have like seven fragrances, I think, in there in uh, to offer. And I've only tried, I actually didn't spend time trying this house. I know I have a, I have a decant of Santal Blonde, which is like a really kind of a, kind of a weak performer, but super natural. I find this, these ingredients, the ingredients they use like really natural. And I've had a problem a little bit with the performance of this fragrance, but I found this time when I wore it yesterday and I allowed myself, now that I have so much, I don't have to be, you know, stingy with myself. I had like maybe seven, eight sprays and it lasted a good, you know, six hours. Um, it's not that bad. You know, I just have to spray a little more and now I have a hundred mil. I'll probably split a, little bit, split a little bit of this because I know people that are interested in it, but this is not a common fragrance. Like not many people have this bottle. Not many people might even like this fragrance. I, I did see this one uh, woman, uh, it was a, one of those YouTubers that just kind of gotten started. She only has like 200 followers or 200 sub subscribers. And she said, she said this perfume made her, <laughs> made her gag. And she said it was absolutely terrible and it smells like feces. So I just want to give you that, that there is, this is not for everyone. And I think it's just incredibly beautiful. It has white cacao, and I really don't know how that is different from other cacao, but it's, it says cacao pod. It has rum, it has immortel, which I normally don't like. Um, white tobacco, which I think is the flowers. Uh, Devana, which is like a bitterish herbal note. So this is not a sweet fragrance at all. It's kind of like a it could have been a gourmand, but it doesn't have the sweetness of a gourmand. Like you, you would not want to put this in your mouth, if you know what I mean. Um, and then it has tonka, patchouli, uh, and sandalwood in the base. And jasmine it has. I don't know if I, I mentioned that. It's just, there's something about the, the way these notes come together that I find really, really beautiful and super unique. The closest thing that I have in my collection is a decant of... of um, blue, it's called Cobalto Blue, I think, or Blue Cobalt, I can't remember, from Valmont. It's a French, or no, it's a, Sw it's a Swiss house, which I did see um, in Paris. I saw those perfumes, and I know they're super pricey. That that fragrance is like $500, like 500 euro, I think, or something. So th those, I didn't even go in there, because I knew I, I didn't, I kind of had a shortage of time, so I didn't really have all the time in the world to spend. So I decided not to go in there. My friend would have let me, it's not that, but like, you know, you have to be a little flexible when you're traveling with someone. I was just happy that someone at a short notice could, could come with me to Paris and I had such a good time and the food was incredible. The people were so friendly and, you know, people just sitting all around at these like cafes and restaurants and, um, and I, and I could really, I could really tell like just walking down the streets or passing restaurants that people in France, uh, wear perfume to a much higher degree than the Swedish population. That is for sure. Cause I could get like a whiff here and a whiff there. And it was not just black opium. You know, I just got, Oh, that was nice. You know, like you, you got a whiff of like good perfume, uh, quite often. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, and then I got, um, at, an, at another, that was, a, that was, his, from, this was from Javoy. This was from Javoy and they had so many houses in their collection, in, in their collection, such an incredible assortment. Uh, really, really nice service. 
A lot of the people there were not French and everybody spoke English except one guy that I think was there just to kind of watch people to, you know, make sure they didn't steal because everything was just out and you didn't have to ask for anything except one fragrance. I did try, um, you know, I don't know what it's called, iris something, but it's like one of that really famous, I'll put it in the comments or in the description box below. I have to look it up, but it's kind of like they're a really famous iris fragrance from Jacques Fat, which is, most of the fragrance is quite cheap, but this particular one, they only sell, I think, in a 30, and it's like really, really expensive. Um, and I really needed to try it just for that reason, and that people have talked about it, and there's a hype around it and everything. And then he took me to the back of the store. He took me to this other room, and he took a, st he dipped this um, blotter stick, and I got to, um, I got to try it, and it was really kind of a hardcore iris, like a really cold, um, earthy iris with, there might have been something else in there, maybe like a hint of sandalwood, maybe a speck of jet, something else, but like it was pretty much straight up iris. Um, and very, I, I found it a little bit difficult to wear, a little bit like silver, silver I, iris silver mist, I think it's called from Serge Lutens, which I don't like, at least not yet. Maybe I'll have to revisit these kind of fragrances in a few years. But um, I was glad to find out that I didn't like it, actually. <laughs> uh, so at, at this other place called Nose, uh, there, I got their little bag. I've seen these, these um, their, you know, little tet samples, kind of like they circulate. And I've, I've ended up with a few of them. And the address is here. This one I just kind of stumbled across. We were out going out to dinner. I'm just, oh, here's Nose, because I've heard, I've heard about it. And we, we got there 10 minutes before closing. And I immediately picked out something that I've been looking for for a while and I've of course been able I could have probably ordered it but I really wanted to try it again I went through a sample a few years ago and it's this one now I don't know if you can see this but it's from Filippo Sorsinelli it used to be called South Perfumes I think S-A-U-F but they changed the name now to Extra de Musique so these are all extra de parfum par, they're parfum like extra uh, concentration and this particular fragrance is called Undamaris 8 and Filippo Sorsinelli is kind of a multi-artist. He started playing the organ in a, a different cathedrals in, in Italy when he was only 13. And so he's a musician and he loves improvisation. So I don't think he's just into classical. Um, and his, this is what the fragrance inside, this is really hard to open without ruining the package. I had to kind of like, you see, I've kind of ruined it a little bit. But inside you get this like big wooden thing and this is what the bottle looks like. Not a stunning bottle, you might think, but it, this is supposed to look like a like an organ pipe, like of the cathedral in, in Notre Dame, I think. Um, but he's an organist, and that's kind of where he gets his inspiration from the church. And when he was a choir boy, boy he used to like, um, you know, prepare the incense for the ceremony. And he kind of got into perfume. He's also into fashion and he makes like clothes for like for two different popes. He's been like a, someone who has made, you know, the, their, um, clothing. I don't even know what the Pope's clothing is called, but he's, he's kind of a, he's an interesting person. I really want to look into him some more. Um, anyway, this fragrance, and I didn't know if he was the perfumer or not, because like, if you look at Fragrantica, there's no perfumer listed, so I thought maybe he was only like the creative person behind the brand, but in another another article, I found that he was a perfumer, so I guess he is the perfumer behind these fragrances, and I think there are like six of them in this special line, and I think the most famous one is called Contre Bombard 32, and that's a very incense -y fragrance, but they're all kind of based around incense notes, and this one is... Uh, this one really feels a void in my collection. So in that way, I'm really happy that I just didn't that I didn't just pick up, you know, ambers and things that I like already have. And so Cacao Parcelana definitely also I have nothing like this in my collection. And my other patchoulis don't smell anything like that. But this is a marine fragrance, and I'm not really a marine kind of person, but this is the exception to the rule. Um, it's kind of the same category as squid from Zoologist, but in 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 terms of that it has like marine notes and it also has kind of an ambery vanillic kind of base. This has that too, but this is more, um, I think the incense is more prominent here. And I think it, if it had just been for the opening, I don't think I would have bought a bottle because, because it's all about the dry down for me. But the opening is really like, wow. You're like, as soon as you spray it, you're like, my God, what is this? I'm just going to spray it again. 
this is my scent of the day. So this is what, I, what I'm wearing right now. So I've got the dry down here, but now I have a little bit of that heliotrope because I just sprayed the heliotrope blanc. Um, but this has like, it has a really bright opening and you can smell the marine quality like straight away. Uh, but it's kind of cold and has eucalyptus artemisia, which is a little bit bitter. Uh, myrtle, which I'm not really familiar with what myrtle, but it has myrtle both in the top and the mid. And citron, which is like a another kind of citrus fruit. It's not a real lemon. It's one of these big lemons, I think. And jasmine. And then come in the mid, the C notes with myrtle, nutmeg, and geranium. Uh, and geranium is kind of has a rosy nuance to it. I'm kind of learning about geranium uh, through Ramsey's channel because a lot of these fragrances that he talks about, the vintage ones, have uh, geranium. And I don't, I don't really know. I couldn't pick this fragrance out, but I know the style of fragrance where you normally find it, put it that way. And then it has in the base incense, and I think incense, a lot of incense, but it to soften it up, it has been, it has all these other like sort of ambery notes like vanilla, tonka, benzling, um, patchouli, and musk. Um, I mean, I, I went through a sample, and the sample lasted me like forever, so this is really an extra de parfum that makes up for that. I mean, that really, you know, sometimes you get an extra de parfum and it's like, oh, I wouldn't have guessed, you know, like... Um, I think my koala, for example, from Zoologist is an extra de parfum, but it's, it, it behaves just like an EDP. I could be wrong there, but there are others that I'm just like, oh, this is an extra, but you know, you can't really tell. Uh, but this one you can definitely tell. I have to spray it again just to kind of tell you a little bit about the opening. Um, because this is kind of a wow opening, even though I would not, because it's, there's so much of that. You can see, you immediately picture the sea, like, or a beach with like, and not a beach with a bunch of people drinking fruity drinks. It's more like of a, of a rocky beach with some seaweed that has kind of like come up on the sand and dried in the sun maybe. And I normally don't like this kind of thing. So this is, I'm mean, really aqua di sale. I'm sure I've reviewed that on my channel before. I really, really don't like that. I did go back though and try it one more time uh, recently. And I, did, I noticed that I didn't hate it quite as much as I did the first time. Um, but I mean, I used to, I, I tried that on two years ago and I I had to scrub it off. I thought it was so horrible. Aqua di Sala from Perfumum Rome, I'm talking about. This one, I mean, this has those, that incense in the base, uh, incense and this amberiness and, but it's not sweet. I mean, it has, it does have sweetness, but it's not like a real sweet fragrance. Oh, this is just incredibly beautiful. This was not cheap. And neither was cacao porcelana. So this one I paid 230 euros for. And basically, this is, you can't get it cheaper anywhere else. I really did uh, pay attention, you know, I really went in and checked, you know, can I get it cheaper anywhere else? But no, not many places carry this brand either. But you can get it. I did find a Romanian re website that does sell decants, like a 10 milliliter decants of it. Um, so that I was considering. But I thought since I really love this so much, I'm, I'm going to get this bottle. I think this one was, um, what was it, 165 or 195? I think it was 165 euros um, for 50 mil. Or was it one? I can't remember. It, it was, was not cheap for 50 mil. This is at least 100 mil. So that you have to take into consideration, of course, the size of the bottle. But this is so strong that I could probably compare this. These two definitely, this is as much, this is as much perfume as this, even though it's half the volume as this because it is twice as powerful. So, I mean, this thing with price per milliliter, and I mean this, this is like super, super light. Um, I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly, I think, because I can just shower in it. It's so light and I don't think the longevity is that great either. And I don't care so much because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that expensive, but I do love the the fragrance itself, that really light vanilla heliotropy uh, floralness, but with a real fresh, I'm sure there's some citruses in there, although it's not list, they're not listed. But my overall um, impression of Paris is that it is a real perfume city, and I really, really badly want to go back, and I want to spend more time. So, okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about Galerie Lafayette, which is like um, kind of a department store that sells both fashion and has perfume. But there were so many people there, and everything was just pressed into a very small, um, small space. Uh, this was on Champs Elysees, which is their you know big fancy street where they have like the flagship stores for different you know Guerlain and all these places, and uh, maybe Louis Vuitton. I don't know exactly which ones, but 
they um it, it kind of it kind of ends up in uh this Lac de Triomphe you know like a there's like this it, it's kind of a, a site in Paris that you've probably seen on postcards and things like that uh so it kind of ends up there but this place was so crowded and it had so many niche brands um plus like the the um, the designer exclusives like YSL and Armani and all these as well and they had like a little um Penhaligans had their own little shop, L'Artisan Parfumeur had their own little shop, but they were very small. It was hard to find someone that could take care of you. Uh, and there's so many people, I guess a lot of tourists. And then you kind of walk down to their main, like where they had all kinds of different brands, like just on, it was just shelf after shelf and very crowded. So I kind of got a feeling that we were in an outlet, you know, buy, shopping for luxury perfume. I thought it was kind of a, because if you go to like, Nordstrom in the States or you go to like NK which is our high-end um, perfume shop it's kind of like quiet you can definitely find someone working there that can help you maybe some perfumes are out on a counter like displayed nicely um, they're nicely lit up maybe uh, and it's just kind of an overall luxury feeling but this was just like you could and you could buy you could try everything on your own which I do appreciate a lot but I was surprised at like how they had presented all of that. And I just wondered what the brands thought of, you know, their idea about, um, you know, presentation, I would think would be very far from the way they were presented in Galerie Lafayette. So I went, I, I left there empty handed. It was just too much at once. I mean, a lot of the brands I was familiar with, but there was a lot of new stuff that I had never seen. Like, um, and there were brands that I'd heard about, but never been able to try. So, I mean, I tried a few things, but it was just, it was just too, too nervous. It was too, too, you know, I need a little bit of peace and quiet when I'm trying perfume, which I did find in uh, Javoy and Nose. Both of those shops, Javoy was about twice the size of Nose. And Nose also had like a bunch of just like, you know, skin and care and that kind of stuff. Javoy was all perfume, basically. I didn't see, I don't think they even had any like hand lotion or, you know, lotion to go with the fragrances or anything like that. And they had... Uh, yeah, they had at least twice as much. Um, Javoy was like my favorite. If I would get to go back somewhere, it would be to Javoy. I, I really, really loved that shop. I mean, they had, maybe I was familiar with like half the perfume houses in there. And many like familiar with, but had never tried. And then there were perfume houses that I had never seen before, never heard of. There was like a new, a new house called Olibanum that was all kind of looked organic. Um, I tried a beautiful fragrance from there called Opoponax. Uh, the only problem with that one was they, they, they sold their fragrances in 50 mil bottles that looked really small and they were like 87 euros. Um, and I thought that was an interesting kind of price point for the quality, but you didn't get a cap. So the, the fragrances kind of looked like this, just you, you know, but, but it kind of like a steel top, kind of like Maison Margiela replica like those bottles. And I really don't like that. I really want a top. So like I was, and I mean, I knew that I just couldn't, couldn't give things a full wearing there. I spent some time trying fragrances from, uh, what's called Rania J. I've earlier got, gone through a decant of, of Amber Loop, which is a really nice Amber with, with animalic undertones. Like that whole house I think is, is, is known for, um, it's animalic undertones and they had a new release called I think Sha Chaniar or something like that with oud in the base and I think it had a caramel note I think that's what kind of put it was a little off-putting to me I don't really like caramel um, what else did I try I, I spent a lot of time with um, Ad Ades des Venustas I don't even know how to say this name but they had some really incredible fragrances this house is from New York um, maybe you guys watching are more familiar with it. Uh, I tried a, a fragrance there with vetiver that I didn't dare try because I thought I would come home and find it too masculine. It was called Grenadie d'Afrique. Um, and then I spent some time with Le Galion and I tried a perfume called Fervor, or in French, Fervor, I guess, means like flavor or something. Uh, a really beautiful perfume and also Sovereign, which I've tried before. But these fragrances were like um, at least $20 or 20 euros more expensive in Javoy than they were here in Sweden. So I, I just thought, you know, I'm not going to buy it here and just throw my money away. Um, what else did I try? There were, there were just so many, I, I could have spent so much time in there. I just didn't have, you know, I didn't have for, I had first like an hour maybe. And then 
uh, maybe an hour and a half. And then I went back and I had like an hour and a half again, like alone there without my friend. <clears throat> So I didn't spend any more money, so all I bought was this, these two things from Javoy. And then I, was, I spent a fair amount of time actually with Javoy, the brand itself. And I kind of got stuck on a few fragrances, and they gave me samples of them. And one is called uh, Gardez-moi, and it means, um, I think, keep me, keep me. And the other one is called Rouge Assassin, which I think means red murder, which is quite a name for a fragrance. But this, this Rouge Assassin is like a really powdery, makeup-y kind of fragrance. Um, I just kind of, right before I, I turned on this video, I sprayed a little bit on my right hand. No, oh, I think it must have been the other way around. Yeah, I think I got them wrong here. This, this is Garde Moi, is like a, a gardenia. I get tuberose from it. I don't think tuberose is listed. Um, but it has an interesting note of tomato leaf, which gives it a real green kind of character. And it has black pepper aldehydes. It was created by Bertrand de Chafour, which I find interesting because I like a lot of his stuff. It has raspberry and oak moss in the base. It has all these mimosa absolute, white lily. It's, I mean, it's a white floral, but it has a lot of other things going on with this, with this tomato leaf. It's just interesting. I'm so glad they gave me a sample. It was too early to, to make a decision. And also they only come in 100 mil and they're also like quite pricey. I mean, they're not like super, super expensive, but since they only come in 100 mil, that's still a lot of money. And this Rousse Assassin, I was really hooked on, and I wore it that same night when they gave this to me. And this was uh, created by Amélie Bourgeois, uh, and it was, it, 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 was uh, it came out in two, 2012, and it has like a rice note and all these like makeup-y notes. I think it's violet. Let's see, iris, not violet, rose, Elemy bergamot. I was so sure it had violet, but it has something really makeup-y. Um, really interesting fragrance. Oh, it has, it's Elemy. This is this, this also incense note and has sandalwood, tonka, vanilla, white musk in the base, ambrette. But this rice, I think, gives it this powdery kind of effect. And it was interesting to see that um, I was planning on getting a, picking up a bottle of Blanche Bette from Liquid Imaginaire. Um, but I've kind of, I think I've maybe grown out of it. And also I have two things in my collection that are a little bit too similar for me to dare to pick up a bottle, um, which is um, Lost Alice from Masque Milano and Angelique from Papillon. Um, but I found, I tried it twice, like with the first time I went there and then I went back and I had it all over my arm and I really sat down because they had this little, you know, group of couches and you could sit down and I just, you know, sat down and spent time with it alone because I, I really, really have had cravings for a bottle. But I just decided it was too buttery, like buttery in a not completely natural way. And the milkiness, it was just a little too much, I think, for me, um, the sweetness of it. And I think I will get bored with it. Um, it's milky. It has some floral note, which I really like, but I think it's a little bit too heavy. It doesn't have coconut listed, but it gives a coconut feeling. So I just decided to pass on it because it was 250 euro. And I can order it from there because I think if you order over to, let's see, to uh, over 200 euro, they, they give you free shipping, so I, ca I can get it for the same price as if I got it in store. But I, I, I don't think, I, th I think I'm glad I didn't get it because I think it's the kind of thing that you're blown away at first and then you get tired of it. So I, I was afraid of getting bored. I mean, it lasts so long, the performance is incredible. I would love to buy decant, like five or 10 mil. So I'm hoping that like one of my friends will buy a bottle and I can buy some from them or swap some because I think I want to wear it. I just don't think I want a hundred mil of it. But uh, that fragrance is, I mean, it is beautiful, but I'm, I'm just kind of afraid that I will get, I won't reach for it that often. It's more like, wow, the first time you spray it. I don't know. What, what do you think about Blanche Bet? Have you tried it? Because it's like, I don't know. Um, speaking of another fragrance that I'm kind of a little bit considering letting go from my collection that I was really excited about just like a month ago or two months ago, it's Guidance from Amouage. Um, and I got a really good price on Guidance. I mean, the, the price at Javoy for Guidance was like 455 euro. I mean, they had all the new stuff except King Blue. Uh, King Blue, I think, just recently came out. And if you're interested in it, Ramsey has made... Um, a video on it just just like yesterday or two days ago. Um, oh, by the way, Ramsey did comment on my video. 
And he said he never did uh, erase one of my comments and that his comment about that, that he sometimes takes uh, fragrances away was not, he did, wasn't referring to me, but to people in general. And he says he's never taken a comment away from me, which I find a little bit strange because I know I put the comment there. Uh, but you know, something could, maybe it's a mistake. I don't know, misunderstanding or something. Um, but I can't imagine, because I saw my comment up there, you know, the night before and then it was gone. So, you know, I don't know what happened. Um, but I guess we're sort of on speaking terms and he, um, maybe, maybe it was a misunderstanding. Who knows? Um, because I really didn't say anything that bad, you know, like it's, it's different if you, I was kind of, I was being a little bit polite about it, but he did mention it in one of his last videos, the one about Centauri, the one, the, the free gift that he got that was so generously sent to him. He has now made a video of, and I think he did get, he did do a pretty good job in reviewing it. Uh, it sounded honest to me. You know, he said he wouldn't buy a bottle of it. Um, it reminded him about when he used to vape, etc. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to spend any more time on it, but I'm not going to stop watching his channel either. Um, what was I going to say about it? Oh, King Blue. They didn't have King Blue. But I, I noticed that like a lot of these new amouages were like 455 euros. Just so, so expensive. You can get them cheaper if you're lucky now and then. I got guidance for like a hundred dollars or hundred euros cheaper than the, the the marketing price in Sweden, like where you, at different places, which is about the normal price is about four hundred, but I got it for under three hundred. I think I paid two eighty or something like it, something like that. And I've 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 sold decant, so I have like maybe I have forty five percent left of a bottle. I think I can sell it for the price that I gave, since it isn't so easy to find for that price, and a lot of people are interested in it. So I might let it go, and just keep maybe a decant. Um, maybe five or ten mil or something because I, I like it. I like it. I just think it's it's really hard to wear. It's like such a beast mode fragrance. I mean, you put it on, it fills the entire house, um, and it sticks sticks on your clothes like forever. And I just think that's a little bit too much. Like I don't want to suffocate people. I know it gives my friend a headache. Um, there's something in that fragrance that doesn't feel 100% natural. I think I might say. But it's really unique at the same time. So I mean, I, I can see why they've they've launched it, and I think it might interest a whole bunch of people. I know Ramsey's really critical about where Amouage is going. They're they're trying to create you know fragrances for younger people, for the masses. But I mean, they want to survive, right? It's it's all about survival. And maybe there's such a big house now with so many launches that they can they can maybe you know stick a little bit with the old stuff and and release some 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 good things for the the fragrance nerds. Um, like us, and some things for the masses, and still kind of remain um, at the top of people's lists. I'm just thinking, you know, it, it, if you're a company, you have to kind of remain a company, and if you don't make money, you are not going to exist in the long run. So you can't just be artsy. I think it's really hard to completely ignore, you know, the commercial side of things. Anyway, um, I just wanted to mention a few other brands that I am now more interested in than I was. Uh, Julia, who who's kindly sent me, um, this is, was a real gift, uh, sent me these vintage, I, there's a video on that, vintage fragrances. She also included a fragrance, a, a current formula of uh, Tabac Blonde from Caron, which is an old house, but they have now like kind of modernized their, they have a whole series of like modern fragrances. I think some of them are like older fragrances that they've kind of modernized, but this particular fragrance, this house they had at Nose, you know, at, at Nose they had kind of high up there, but they, the, the price range of this house was like outrageous. Um, that's why I kind of didn't, I didn't want to give them that much of a chance because I really didn't want to spend like over $300 for 50 mil, which is I think, I think 50 mil was either close to 300 euros or a little above that, like super, super expensive but I really like these fragrances and this is not a, no exception. This Tabac Blonde is really beautiful. This is like French perfumery. French, beautiful, floral. A lot of them were like that. Um, they had Chypres. I mean, I would love to try more from that house. I just wasn't willing to spend the money and therefore I didn't spend so much time with that house, but my God. And then I tried another beautiful fragrance that I kind of decided against because um, because the performance was so bad and that it is from the house 
Stefan Humbert Lucas 777, uh, and it's called Mortal Skin, and it's kind of an incense-y kind of fragrance, but it, it disappeared on me. Like in 30 minutes, it was gone. So, but it's so pretty. Um, the bottle is stunning, and I haven't had a problems with perf problem with performance with this house before, so I was really surprised. And I've heard that the new the new fragrance is called God of Fire or something like that, and it has some like fruitiness in it. It's supposed to be like beast mode. Um, I tried them all, like I tried them all, but I can't really remember. I couldn't tell you about them equally. But this Mortal Skin is not a new fragrance, but so so pretty. Maybe I'll, it'll, I feel different about it when I'm, you know, trying it at home and everything is kind of like calm. There was just so much going on. I couldn't take it in. I just wish I had, you know, I lived in Paris. I could spend, you know, an hour a day there instead or something because it was too much at once. Um, but I, I'm, they actually gave me two samples of this so I can really, really try it. Um, so I was really appreciative of that. And I got, and maybe this is a new fragrance too, Sous le Pont, uh, Mar Mir Mirabeau from Eldo. Uh, I think it's like a juniper berry kind of gin and tonic kind of fragrance. I'm not looking forward to it so much. I also got a sample of Vanilla Vibes from Juliet Has a Gun. Low expectations of that. Um, but I did also get uh, from Memo a sample of Italian leather that I have tried earlier. <clears throat> I've even owned like a decant because I had like a discovery set from uh, from the house like with 10 fragrances and they were all 10 mil each and I ended up selling them individually because I never wore them but I think now I'm ready for Italian leather again and this one also has a note of tomato leaf that I mentioned earlier in Gare des Mois uh, from Javoy and this Italian leather um, it has iris iris and leather and tomato leaf and it's it just a really interesting uh, compos uh, composition, I think. And it does remind me a little bit of Iris Malikan from Maison Crivelli, which I was, a little, was I was a little bit on the fence about that one, if it's too vanillic or it, it's too something. Because I just realized Ms. Maison Crivelli, I don't know. When it all comes down, when I've been through a sample, usually I'm done. You know, like I, I, I'm not super impressed with the house in general, but that Iris Malikan is kind of stuck with me. And maybe someday I will want a bottle of it. But this one reminds me a little bit of it, and I think it's—I find it really interesting with this tomato leaf thing, because you can really tell. This is, I'm just going to give myself a little on the spritz on the fingers here, just to remember. Yeah, it's very much tomato leaf, very much in the, in the openings, especially. But I, I like that. I like the combination. I mean, this one reminds a little bit of. We went to Guerlain, you know, and we tried many of their exclusives, and they have one called Iris. Torrefié, which is like a leather powdery iris. Um, I think it smells a little bit like this, but I haven't been able to smell them side by side. So maybe that one also has some kind of green note in there. I have to look that up right after I hang up here. I'm going to check it out um, on Fragrantica. And I'm a little bit curious. Do you guys use Fragrantica or do you guys use Perfumo? I know Ramsey doesn't like Fragrantica for some reason. And I've heard that Perfum uh, Perfumo also offers, you know, information about if the fragrance is discontinued or not, which is a nice feature, because I do miss that. Um, I have also, uh, you know, Demi Rawlings' new app called Sniff, which I don't find at all as good as Fragrantica. What I like about Fragrantica is the reminds me of section. That really is helpful, I think. And also the articles I've really started to read more. And a little bit, you know, the gender thing. Do people find it male, female? And what notes are most dominant? So, I mean, if, if a fragrance has many, many ratings, usually there's useful information there, I find. And it's really easy to kind of... I mean, I like it. I, I think it works for me. Uh, this, this Italian leather, I'm definitely going to be wearing. Um, yeah, when, so when I shopped, when I got this one at Nose... Um, please go there. It's so nice. And it's a really nice little neighborhood too, um, with kind of like lots of little restaurants and bakeries and, you know, they sell little sweets and it's it just really nice shoe stores, things like that. But they, they just, when I bought that first, they gave me the mortal skin because I was particularly interested in it, but then they just kind of grabbed a bunch of samples and, and, and put it in my bag. And I got like three Italian leathers. So I gave one to my friend 
I, I got this one. I got Vanilla Vibes. I got, you know, I got a bunch of stuff. So I like that, that you, when you buy a bottle, you get a bunch of, of, of um, samples. I think in Sweden, the stores are very um, uh, careful with giving samples. And I think it's because people have started selling samples. You know, they, if people go into a store, you don't, basically you, here, you don't get a sample if you don't buy anything. That's pretty much the, the rule. Uh, it can happen sometimes. I mean, I've been given samples, but not very often. You know, I, I am, usually it's with purchases. And I, I think fair enough, you know, if, if, people, if there's a market for samples and people buy samples, so that why should they give them, you know, it's, it's up to each store, but I can see how that could get really expensive. Um, and uh, what else did I want to say? God, there were so many impressions. I'll get back to, to, to Paris and... I think my general impression is, you know, I want to go again, um, maybe with a group of perfume friends, uh, and we can make it all about perfume perhaps. And then we just have a good dinner at night and sit and discuss the perfumes and you can sit outside. We had some really bad weather though. Um, I mean, when it pours in Paris, it really pours. it's cats and dogs. And, um, it, it's so quickly, you know, it filled the streets and it was just like flooding and we had nowhere to put our feet and we got back to the hotel and we were drenched. And even though we had umbrellas, and we tried to get a cab, and it was really hard. And um, but it, it was great fun. I, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, seeing the Eiffel Tower from the water. Um, the, the Louvre was really, really stressful. I found it was just so, so many people. Uh, there were lines everywhere. Uh, it was just really, really loud. Like the sound level was really loud, and it's hard to appreciate art when you have that sound level going on. So. You know, maybe I'm just getting too old for this kind of, this kind of stuff. It's it's I like smaller, you know, enjoying art in smaller places. But I did feel inspired, and I and I would go to like our Swedish art museums. We have a great collection of of art in Stockholm. So I mean, maybe I'll just you know sightsee in my own town where it's a little more a little more low key. Maybe this was also the high season. You know, maybe that was why it's so crazy. But and it's one of the main sites of the world. So no wonder there were so many people. Um, I'm very just very happy that we didn't have a heat wave. Um, it was between like 23 and 26 degrees Celsius. When the sun came out, it was just beautiful and even a little bit on the hot side. But um, so we had rain and sunshine off and on. It was a great trip. Uh, just so happy. Um, but I was disappointed in the airport. I was really looking forward to the Charles de Gaulle uh, tax-free shopping with Serge Lutens. And people had said, you know, that they would have... I thought maybe they would have Guerlain fragrances, um, you know, at a lower price than than Champs Elysees, perhaps. I, I really like from Guerlain, by the way, um, Leur Bleu and um, L'Instant, L'Instant de Guerlain, uh, which I think they both come in EDTs and EDPs. Um, I found these really beautiful floral fragrances, but there's a big difference in price um, depending on where you buy. And the exclusives are always expensive. I think you can't get them cheaper anywhere. Uh, but the other Guerlain's, the ones that come in these bottles that look like a, I think it looks like a heart upside down or something. Um, you can get your own, and you can basically get any fragrance from Guerlain in the B bottle with your name engraved and stuff if you pay extra. But these simple bottles um, were really expensive in the flagship store. Um, but you can get them cheaper <clears throat> like in, in nor normal places or like online somewhere. So maybe I will actually get a Guerlain coming up, but I'm not going to buy any more fragrances now for a while. And I think my next purchase will probably be something from Le Galion because I really uh, love their fragrances and I want to try more from there. And I know a Swedish place that sells uh, samples and maybe I'll get some samples first. And I know she's also, you know, 20, 20 euros cheaper than Javoy and it would be nice to give her some more business. And she has a really good selection, even like compared to Javoy. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of Sweden, you know, that we have a few people that have really, um, you know, follow their passion and, and have web shops that have, and she even has like a physical store, even though it's only by appointment, you know, in northern Sweden in a town that no, no tourist would go visit probably from, from like France or something. Uh, so so we, we have a pretty good selection of fragrances, but there's more out there. But I think I, I'm going to enjoy what I have now for a while. Um, and thank you for all your tips. Uh, in, in, I, I did try. Um, I can't remember what you guys all said. I'll have to go back and read. But I had a great time anyway. And this is a really long video. <laughs> uh, um, thank you all for watching. I'll be back soon with another video.